Big time matchup and our co-main event this weekend at Women's Flyweight, we have a couple of fighters that you probably recognize. The Gorilla, Liz Carmouche, taking on former Invicta Flyweight champ, Vanessa Porto. And Matt, I love the matchup. Okay. These are two gritty veterans of the sport, both 37 years of age. And for Liz Carmouche, a very early adopter in the Invicta FC promotion, we can talk about her career. She's faced some of the best competition in the world, but let's talk about some of Carmouche's wins. She's beaten Valentina Shevchenko by finish, Jessica Andrade by finish. She has wins over Lauren Murphy, Caitlin Chukagian, Jennifer Maya, and in her Bellator debut, finished Deanna Bennett, somebody that Invicta fans definitely know, but a gritty veteran and another true pioneer of the sport. We look the other way. For Vanessa Porto, a fighter that maybe some people don't focus on, 30 professional fights. She's faced some of the biggest names in MMA. A win and a loss against Roxanne Modafferi. She's faced Amanda Nunes, Chris Cyborg in the past, as well as Jennifer Maya. Again, the former Invicta champ. She's on a four-fight win streak. We haven't seen Porto in about a year and a half. So it's been a little bit with Carmouche, like I said. She's a little bit more fresh. But both of these women, very game opponents. For Carmouche, she's a seventh ranked pound for pound woman with Bellator right now. She's the number two ranked flyweight behind her teammate, number one, Alima Leigh McFarland. And then, of course, you have your champion, Juliana Velasquez. A lot of people thinking that maybe the winner of this fight gets an opportunity to fight Velasquez for the belt. Will it be USA Brazil again, or will we have an all Brazilian matchup for the title? That remains to be seen. I love this matchup, though, Matt, stylistically. And Vanessa Porto, in an interview with SureDog, she did this week. She doesn't want you to call this a clash of styles stylistically. This is a clash of styles. It really is, but I do think this is going to be a very fun fight because you have two fighters who have been there and done that in their MMA careers. Two really legends of the sport because for Vanessa Porto, you had mentioned just the list of women who she's run through. You look at the, her record pre-2010, a lot of those fighters are still relevant today. You talk about the Amanda Nunes of the world, the cyborgs of the world. Vanessa Porto has been in there with some of the most dangerous women on planet Earth. Now with Liz Carmouche, it's kind of interesting, right? She has her fight against Valentina in the UFC after after her win, one of the weirdest fights in UFC history, just a, just not a lot of anything happened, really. Of course, when Valentina did let her hands go, she was able to land on Liz Carmouche. And this is going to be interesting about this fight because a lot of the times, and I will say, in women's MMA, I do think experience is a lot more important than in men's MMA because experience against high-level competition really will make you better. And for Liz Carmouche, a lot of people forget she was in the first ever women's title fight in the UFC. She broke Ronda Rousey's jaw with that crazy rear naked choke. And then, of course, she ended up losing to Rousey. But that's how entrenched Liz, Car Liz Carmouche is really in the MMA history books. So just a really fun fight between these two. For Vanessa Porto, it will be interesting because you do bring up some of the fighters who she's fought. These fighters have kind of been on opposite trajectories, if you will, through the last couple of years. Because for Vanessa Porto, she really has been winning titles in Invicta, getting better. And she reminds me a little bit, and this is going to be a bit of an exaggeration, but she's had a bit of a Jan Blahovich resurgence in her last few fights. You see that she isn't just the jiu-jitsu fighter she once was. She now can strike quite a bit better. She has different footwork, I will say. She can get caught up while moving backwards. It's one thing that I don't always love out of Porto. She can move backwards and not get her feet tangled up, but she gets her feet very close together and it's normally a characteristic that you see of fighters who have been rocked it's just something that she will get caught up doing in her fights and if Carmouche fights with a lot of pressure like you know she can do it's something that Porto might get caught up doing stumbling over herself or at least moving backwards but my key to this fight not to sound like Yanni the Greek but my key to this fight is pressure I really do think the fighter moving forward will be the fighter winning because we know how good Carmouche is with her grappling and her forward offensive but I don't think Liz Carmouche striking's that bad I'm gonna throw her in with a Jordan Griffin type of a level fighter where I wish they would strike just a little bit more than they would. I understand her grappling is very good. I understand her jiu-jitsu is very good, but her striking is not bad by any means. And if she can keep fighters at a certain range before taking it to the ground, that's what I really like. Uh, that's what I really like Liz Carmouche. Sorry. And I mean, in this fight, you look at it and for Vanessa Porto, last time out was in November of 2019. It's been a lengthy layoff. She fought Karina Rodriguez. She won by unanimous decision. That was supposed to be for the belt. Rodriguez weighed in way over the limit. So, again, four-fight win streak. You like the wins. Melania uh, Tiduva, you know her, really butchered the name. You've got Mariana Moraes, Pearl Gonzalez, and then Rodriguez as well. 
it's an interesting matchup again because if you look at Vanessa Porto and the way she fights, you talked about it, the way that she steps in. If she blitzes a fighter, she really causes them issues. And when she gets the fight to the mat, very positionally sound to where she's always looking to move into an opportunity where she can rack up a submission. And again, that Pearl Gonzalez fight, it was a very close one. It's a technical decision, a legal shot at one point, and then you get the decision. But a very, very good fight and a good barometer as to what Vanessa Porto can bring into the cage. For Liz Carmouche, we have the accurate numbers because you can get them from the UFC stat website. But I went with all-time women's bantamweight numbers and then tacked on a little bit. This is absolutely crazy. Number two all-time for significant strike defense at 65.8%. Number three for takedowns landed at 15. She's also landed 10 more at flyweight. That's insane. That Liz Carmouche, very takedown heavy. But the thing that you like out of Carmouche is that her wrestling's very good and her jiu-jitsu is very good. Two things that, especially at Bantamweight and Women's Flyweight, you don't always see those two jive. No, exactly. And for Carmouche, again, it's because she is so experienced. She's been in there with some of the best fighters, really, of all time. And she's learned from all those experiences. Here's the other thing. I don't think we're dealing with two fighters on the decline, necessarily. I just think we're dealing with two fighters who are at a point in their career where they have a lot of experience. And when you've fought the best of the best, like both these two women have throughout your career, you're gonna have some losses on your way. But that's the best thing about MMA. It's not like boxing. You can lose and still get better because of it and i think both of these fighters have been on that trajectory and i mean the big point for vanessa porto coming into this one signed a four fight contract with bellator Good so it's her. not just a one and done again both these women just turned 37 if we have a look at topology matt 680 total votes 87 percent carmouche 90 percent by decision if we look at the odds carmouche open a minus 185 favorite she's now minus 178 for Porto, open a plus 155, now at a plus 146. So maybe it's a little bit of UFC notoriety, some of the fights, some of the wins. It is a great matchup. What are your final thoughts on this one? So it will be interesting. And again, I do really think pressure is going to be key for the winner if it is Porto or Carmouche. But my problem is Vanessa Porto can get backed up. Whereas Liz Carmouche, she rarely does back up unless you do hit her with a big strike. You really have to earn her respect for her to start taking a step back. Whereas Porto can give up space sometimes. And for Carmouche, I'm not saying make this a boring fight, fight per se, but she will have to incorporate her wrestling. I see a lot of her wrestling up against the cage. Takedowns have Porto kind of get back up to her feet rinse and repeat because i do think carmouche has the cardio edge out of these two fighters and if she's the one making porto work and not the other way around i like carmouche via decision i like carmouche for all of those reasons again that 10th planet connection you see those crazy dead orchard chokes that alima lay will do but listen liz carmouche you want to see somebody that's very adept on the ground you look at it the connection with richie martinez you also have eddie bravo as well and if you look at it for vanessa porto you do the research not out of one of the bigger gyms in the world but She's carved out such an impressive career. Oh, yeah. So for me, I'm going with Carmouche. You're going with the Gorilla to get the win. Love the fight. Great co-main event. We have an awesome main event. The rematch between your former light heavyweight champ and the man himself, the dragon, Leoto Machida, in this light heavyweight tournament. Matt, we're going Carmouche. We're really looking forward to the fight. And as we always say with Fight Night Picks, let's get into it.